Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna look at how we can add a social login to a WordPress site. So if you run an online store, a membership site, or something similar where people sign up and log into your site, this video is for you. Let's take a look at what a social login looks like on a website. So this is the WordPress login screen. And as you can see, there's two additional buttons on the screen underneath the login button where you can continue the login process with Facebook and with Google as well. So this is what we're gonna be creating in this video. So now we're gonna go through installing and setting up the social login feature with Facebook and Google. Let's do it. So the first thing we wanna do is log into our WordPress dashboard and install the next end social plugin. So to do that, all we need to do is head over to plugins here on the left hand side, hover over that and click on add new. Once the page loaded, come up to the search bar up at the top right and type in next end. Hit enter. Now this is the plugin that we wanna install right here. So we're just gonna click the install now button. And once that's installed, we'll click that button again to activate the plugin. Now we can see the plugins installed right here. We're just gonna to go to the settings, which can be accessed from this little link here, or you can go to settings, hover over that, and then click on next end social login. Now this is the first screen you're gonna see, and you can see all the providers that you can connect to to provide a social login feature on your login screen. So there's lots of different providers available, but the ones that we're gonna be looking at for this video are Facebook and Google. Before you start this setup, you will need to create an account with any of these providers to be able to connect Next End Social Login and your website to that provider. So once you've got a Facebook or Google account or any of the others set up, you can then start the process. So we're gonna start with Facebook first, so we're gonna click the Getting Started button right here. And on the Getting Started screen, you get a lot of information and a complete rundown of all the steps that you're gonna go through when you connect Facebook to your website. So this may seem a little technical to some people, but actually if you follow the steps in this video, and I'll also drop a link in the description to the article on the WP Beginner website as well, which gives you lots of information about each step in this process. But follow along in this video and we'll go through it step by step and break everything down so it's nice and easy and it is fairly straightforward once you get going. So the first thing we're gonna do is there's a nice little link here to the Facebook developers website. So you're gonna click that link and it'll open a new tab. Now I'm currently logged into Facebook, but if you weren't logged into Facebook, it'll ask you to log into Facebook first and then it'll bring you to this page. So as you can see, I've got no apps currently created in this space. So I'm just gonna click the green create app button up here. And our first step is to select the type of app we want to create. So for our purpose, we're gonna choose the consumer app type and then click next. So on this screen here, we're gonna provide some basic information for the app. So we're gonna choose the display name. So for me, I'm just gonna choose my website as the display name. Next up, you can drop in a contact email address. At the moment, it's set to the default email address connected with your Facebook account, but you might wanna change that to a business email address. And then the next step here is an optional step. If you wanna choose that, you can do that. Then we can hit the green button over here to create the app. It's gonna ask you to enter your password for your Facebook account. So on this screen here, it's asking us to add products to our app. And the one we wanna choose is the Facebook login one right here. So we're just gonna click setup right there. And out of all these options, the one that we wanna choose is the web option right here. And once you've chosen that option, it's gonna ask you to fill out these options. So you're gonna add the URL of your website in here. And what you can do is if you can go back to your WordPress dashboard, which I've got in open another tab, it's gonna give us the exact URL in the steps here. So just gonna copy that, and then head back over to Facebook and paste it back in there. Click save, it will save those changes, and then click continue. So you can click next on this step, also you can click next on this step too, and on this step. So the next thing we wanna do from here is head over to the sidebar over here on the left, and underneath the product section and the Facebook login section, just click on settings. And when you're on this page, what you wanna do is you want to add in the valid OAuth redirects URI, which is available back over on your dashboard for your website. So you head back over there and under step 12 right here, just copy that and then head back over to Facebook and paste that in there. So all you need to do is click save changes. That's save those changes. Our next step is to head over to settings here and click on that and then click on basic. Now on this page right here, it's very important that you fill out all these details correctly. Take your time to understand what each section is asking you. So the first thing to fill in here is the app domains. So we just need to copy our domain name again and paste it in here. And under point 15 here, it's just asking for this domain. Head back to Facebook and paste that in there. Double check the contact email address right here to just to make sure that's correct. 
and then add in your privacy policy URL. So for this app to work correctly, Facebook requires you to have a privacy policy and a terms of service created on your website. Now it's super easy to do that in WordPress. I'm gonna drop a link in the description below to a video where we cover adding a privacy policy to your website. I've done it for my site already, so I'm just gonna add those in here. My privacy policy and my terms of service are actually on the same page. So I'm just gonna add those in there. Also, my user data deletion instructions are actually on the privacy policy page as well. So I'm just gonna add that in as well. So next we're gonna choose our category. So choose whatever is relevant to you. I'm just gonna choose business and pages. You can also choose to add an app icon if you want. So if you've got a image that's 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels, then you can add that in there. And if we come down, you can choose to fill in these details if you want to, and then just make sure the site URL is correct at the bottom here as well, and then click on save changes. So currently our app is in development mode and to switch that to live mode, all you do is come up here and click on this button right here. So now our app is in live mode. There's only a couple of extra things we need to do. So if we come to the Facebook login section here and click on settings, you may have noticed there's a little warning at the top here to let us know that we only have standard access on a couple of things. So we're gonna change that now by clicking get advanced access. So once we're on the permissions and features section, there's two things we wanna get advanced access on. That's the email section right here and the public profile, which is further on down this list. So we're gonna click on get advanced access button right here for the email section. That gives us this little pop-up, which is asking us that we agree to the data permissions that are laid out by Facebook. So we just gotta click on the little checkbox here to agree to that, and then click on confirm. Enter your Facebook password in when you see this pop-up. Just click submit. So once that's a granted access, you'll see this screen, you just need to close that little pop-up right there. As you can see, the email has got advanced access now. Now it's down to the public profile section public profile section is right here. We're just gonna go through the same process of getting the advanced access. Click the button right there, then confirm you're happy with the details laid out here. Click the blue confirm button. Enter your Facebook password again on this little pop-up, and then click submit. And once that's confirmed, you'll see the screen again, just close this pop-up. And as you can see, we've got both email and our public profile with advanced access. Once that's all fully set up, then head over to settings here, Click on that and then click on basic. And at the top here, you've got your app ID and your app secret. So you need to copy them over into next end on your website. So I'm just gonna copy the app ID first, then head over to the WordPress dashboard, head to settings and paste your app ID in there. Then head back to Facebook, copy your app secret. You may need to click the show button to see the full app secret, then head back to your WordPress dashboard and paste that in right here. Once you've added those two in there, just click the save changes button. Now it's gonna ask you to verify the configuration. So all you need to do is click verify settings. Now it's open this pop-up right here and this is just letting you know that this is the app that's requesting access and this, and all you need to do is click continue with your Facebook profile. Once that's verified, all you need to do is click enable and that is the Facebook login button on the login screen set up and we should be able to see that if we head to our login screen. So I've just opened up the login screen in a incognito window and as you can see there's the Facebook button right there where people can continue logging in with Facebook. So now let's take a look at setting up the Google social login as well. So from here just head back to providers now we're gonna configure the Google one. So we're gonna click the getting started button. And again, it's a very similar process. We're gonna follow each one of these steps and go through it step by step. So our first step is to navigate to the Google developers console. So we're gonna click on this link right here and it's gonna open a new tab. Now your screen might look a little different to this because I've actually created something in this section before. So you might have a create project button or something like that that you see if you haven't worked on the Google Cloud before. So for me, all I need to do is come up here and then click on this drop down. That allows me to come to this section and then click on new project. So on this screen, all we need to do is give the project a name. I'm just gonna put my demo site. I'm gonna leave the organization and the location exactly how they are and just click on the blue create button. 
Now, once I'm on this screen, I can see that I'm not on the project that I've just set up. So I'm just gonna click this drop down and click on that project. Now I'm on that project, I can come to the OAuth consent screen. And we're just gonna set that up. So the first thing we're gonna do is choose the user type for this app. So we're gonna choose an external user type and then click create. And just like the Facebook app, we're just gonna give this app a name. So I'm just gonna call my website name. Next, we're gonna choose an email address where people can contact us for support and any questions that they might have. Then you can add an app logo in here and it just gives you an information that it can be 120 by 120 pixels. So if you've got a logo that you want to use for this app, you can put that in there. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. We come down slightly. And just like Facebook, I recommend filling these out so users can see this information. I'm just gonna add in my information now. Once you've done that, you're gonna add your authorized domains and you can find that information if you head over to the WordPress dashboard and then go through your step-by-steps, you'll see that the domain that you need to put in is here under section 10. So you can copy that and add that in and then add in an email address right here. And then once you've added that in, just click save and continue. And then on this page, you can just press save and continue as well. And then on this page, just click save and continue. Once you see this screen right here, you know that you've finished setting this up. So you can come over here to credentials, click on that. And then we're gonna add some credentials. So we're gonna create some credentials. We're gonna click on this. What we wanna create is the OAuth client ID. And we're gonna choose the application type right here. We're gonna choose a web application. So I'm just give this a name. I'm just gonna call it demo site. We don't need to fill this section in, but underneath the authorized redirect URL, we're gonna add a URI. And to find out that information, just head back to your WordPress dashboard, scroll down a bit, and under section 17 right here, just copy this and then head back to Google and paste that in there. And once you've added that in, just click the blue create button. That then gives you a pop-up with the information that you need to set this up. So you're gonna copy your client ID, head back to WordPress. If you scroll up, you can come to settings, add your client ID right in here, go back to Google, copy your client secret, head back to WordPress and then paste that right in there. Leave that as it is and then click on save changes. As with Facebook, it just wants to verify the settings. So you're just gonna click on that, sign in with the Google account and it's letting you know that works fine. So you can enable that and that's now enabled. One little last step just on the Google side of things is our app's currently in testing mode. So we need to set that into live mode and to do that, we're just gonna come away from that pop-up head to the OAuth consent screen and under the testing section right here, just click publish app. It's gonna ask us if we wanna push it to production, confirm, and now you'll see that that is in production. And now on our login page, we can see we've got both the Facebook and Google buttons there. So people can sign in to the website using Facebook and Google. So that's how we add a social login to our WordPress site. It's a really cool feature and I'm sure it's gonna make it much easier for your site visitors to register and log into your website. If this video helped you out, then let us know in the comments below and be sure to hit the subscribe button to see more awesome videos that help you out with your WordPress site. Thanks for watching.